Hi, I'm having trouble with my characters. When you're plotting a heist, you have to have a lot of people, right, in order to make the heist work. Like Ocean's 11 had 11, Ocean's 12 had 12, Ocean's 13, you, you get the idea, they had like 13 people. My heist crew has, one second, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six. Okay, this is Ocean's Six. This isn't Ocean's anything. This isn't Florence, um, but whatever. <laughs> and I am having a bit of trouble. I know who they are, but I'm having a bit of trouble making sure that they are distinct. So I know their roles in the heist. I know who's the brute and who's the techie person and who's the smooth operator and who's the inside man and all that stuff. But in terms of ensuring that they have, you know, diverse personalities, I am having trouble with that. And so I decided to go back to Brandon Sanderson's <laughs> plotting um, lectures and story lectures, how to write a book lectures. And lecture, I believe it is nine and 10 are all about character. And the very first lecture, he goes through um, a couple things. He says that basically his characters, he likes to concentrate on differing their levels of likability, proactivity, and competence. Hi, I realized as I was editing that I did not do a very good job of explaining those things. So basically these three pillars are like three scales. You can imagine sliding up, sliding down, and your characters can change on where they are on them throughout the story. So likability is how much empathy you establish for the character. And Sanderson says you establish empathy by making them nice, by making them like us, so normal, relatable human, and by showing people liking them. Their proactivity is their motivation and what they're doing to achieve that motivation or how motivated they are and how much they're really going after that motivation. So um, that's like establishing a rooting interest, giving the character a want that's interesting to us, and then having them act on it. And then competence, the third one, is where they are on that progress scale of getting better at what they want to do. In Harry Potter, Harry starts out as like not a good wizard and ends up being like a, you know, <laughs> nah, wizard. Um, in... Um, the Hunger Games, Katniss is like really good at her bow and arrow the whole time, but she grows more competent at kind of fooling the capital over the story, so her competency there changes. So that's that's what that is. Characters can move on any of these scales, and that movement creates a sense of progress in the story. And so I decided I was going to take his lecture and everything I learned from there and turn it into a writing exercise for myself of labeling my characters. So I'm not only doing my six heist crew today, I'm also doing the antagonists slash opponents and there's four of them. So it's like two main with their two, their two henchmen. Is that what you call them? Henchmen? Sure. We'll call them henchmen. And by the way, I'm Nicole Wilbur. I'm a writer and story nerd. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, think about subscribing. And let's get into figuring out these characters. So what I'm doing is I am setting up a Google spreadsheet. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So that is what my spreadsheet is looking like right now. So my main character is my viewpoint character and we have to start right there with her, with Lena. How I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna rank these things from one to five. Um, when I was in my master's, we learned that adding false precision is a bad idea. So let's say you were going from one to 10, like what's the difference between a two and a three? Is there really that big a difference? No, there's not. So I'm gonna go from one to five and I'm gonna say Lena's likability is a solid three. And that's not really gonna change, like proactivity. Okay, so this does get complicated because in terms of her wanting to succeed at the violin and succeed at school and stuff, she's very proactive. She's running this cheating scheme, whatever. But in terms of her like learning what she needs to learn, going out and doing things, kind of leaving the influence of her family and stuff like that, she's very low on proactivity. So I'm gonna put, Viol v for violin. I'm going to put V for violin. She's a five, but like as a person, what, what do we say? Like adventure, adventure. Um, I'm going to call, I'm going to say it's C. C for carving her own path. So in terms of that, she's maybe at a two because she is running the cheating scheme. 
So then at the end, her proactivity with the violin is like a little bit lower just because of like shifted priorities a little bit. So we're gonna say three and then her carving her own path is maybe now at like a four. Yeah, okay, cool. Competence, she's very good at the violin. That stays the same the whole time. I don't feel the need to note it. Um, competence as like a lawbreaker, heist, thief person. Um, I don't think there's a, like, it's not like a learning plot. There's not like a big training plot. There's a little one, but it's not huge. I could make that more a part of it, but I think she probably goes from like a two again because she's a two because she's running this cheating scheme to maybe a four. So her competence changes. Okay. That was a lot for just one character. Let me do the rest of the spreadsheet. Okay, so I finished all of the heist crew. So here's the thing about writing a heist crew, right? And Brandon Sanderson says this in his plot structure. You know, when you don't watch Ocean's Eleven or whatever to see people have these like great arcs, right? You're watching like very competent people doing very cool things as they like snip at each other. This story is a little bit different. I do have arcs with my main characters, um, but the heist crew is, they're like secondary characters, even though they're there a lot, they're not like the main ones. But pretty much all of them are just like, very proactive, very competent. I think it would be funny if Clark is like not quite as good as he thinks he is at being competent. I describe him in the book as a black Elton John, um, who's just like, he's like ritzy and he just walks around with lots of wine and he, um, he, you know, is, is a little bit distracted. He, he's Italian too. Um, and he's a little bit distracted, but like, going on dates and stuff in the middle of the heist and he he's funny i don't know i like him as a character so he's a little bit lower on competence but everybody else is a five and then only one of them is really going to change in terms of likability and that's sippy um and Maisie. and honestly that's just because like they get to know them better so then we get to the antagonists Okay, the end of that was easy because obviously like um, for my kind of like secondary opponents because I have, it's not really four corners of opposition, maybe it kind of is, it's like Lena, the heist crew, the ar fake arts and culture minister of Italy, and um, these big bads, let's call them the big bads. The big bads are very easy. They have to be low on likability, high on competence. They're the villains, woohoo. Um, <laughs> I have backstory and stuff for them. Maybe they'll be, you know, at this, at this, at this book, cause it's the first in a series, they are gonna be a little bit more in the background. Like it's more the henchmen who gets characterized and stuff. Um, so they're not like, we're, we're just kind of figuring out who they are in this, in this book versus later on I feel like they'll come into their badness more but currently like the antagonists the biggest ones that we're going to see the most of are um Sarah and Alessandro and so Sarah's the only one who is probably going to change a little bit and Alessandro is just the same he's just like low on everything I may decided maybe he could be high on pro productivity but not really he's kind of one of those leaders who just like is awful by not doing anything okay that is that is character building. Whew. All right. So did that help me? Um, yeah, yes, that did help. Um, I like this a lot. I've been struggling so much with Lena, the main character's character change in this book. I think I get it kind of now though. So that's good. Um, her major kind of like, look at me, I have changed moment that I've planned does really fit in well with like showing her change in proactivity and competence. So that's like, that is really good. This is very different than like anatomy of story with like the weakness and the need, um, especially the talk of like moral weakness and need. I don't know where that would necessarily fit into this like, three tier, three pillar model. 
However, I do have to say like as a base, it's very helpful <laughs> for charting where the characters start and where they end and kind of getting those contrasting characters. Like the reason I was like, okay, I think Clark should be, you know, like a not proactive and a three on competence who thinks he's a five because everybody else is just like a five on competence and that's kind of boring, right? For everybody to all be the same. So it kind of helps me see like, oh, I need more variety here or there. Um, in terms of like moral weakness and need, I think that's going to kind of be separate from that. And in my video, which is upcoming, I think it might already be up, but it might be next week's video where I'm trying Dan Harmon's um, plot embryo. Also, Rachel Steven has a bunch of videos on that. So I'm trying that for the first time, applying that to my story. And I already kind of have an idea of where the moral weakness and need is fitting in versus where the proactivity and competence is fitting in. Um, so yeah, look out for that. Whew, okay, <laughs> that was a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.